In this segment, I'm going to take a look at the Click to Design tool, and that's found here on the right hand side of your workspace on the digitizing toolbar. Now, currently, that tool is gray, and that means I need to do something first before I can use it. And in this case, I would need to have an image selected to be able to use the Click to Design tool. So, why don't we go ahead and choose the Image drop down menu and choose to insert an image? Now, um, this is the embroidery album folder. It was the folder that was installed with the digitizer software. And I'm just going to go ahead and select on one of the pieces of artwork and choose open. And that puts it on my screen. And you can see here that I have that image selected. And so because I have an image on my screen and it's selected, we can use the click to design tool. Now, looking at this tool, there's actually a little triangle, which if I click right over the triangle, you'll see the tool will fly open and show me that there's two options. Click to design instantly or click to design advanced. Now, let's start with click to design instantly. So when I click click to design instantly, it literally goes ahead and instantly converts the design into embroidery. And if I take a little bit closer look, you can see that all of the elements of the embroidery were converted into stitches automatically. Now I'm going to take a uh, start another new design and we'll take another look at the tool. So I'm going to choose insert image again and this time I'll select this Tiffany um, person's face and just show what happens when you have a multicolored image. So now instead of doing click to design instantly, I'm going to choose click to design advanced because when you use advanced, you have a little bit more control over the process. So now what I can see here is, first of all, it does an image preparation step. And what it says to me is there's 10 colors available in the original artwork. And the software is suggesting that we reduce it to nine. Now, if you wanted to, you could use these little um, eye doppers to add a color to the design. For example, um, you can see here that the this color number six, the blue and the purple, were combined to be the same color. If I didn't want that, I could do well one of two things. I guess one thing I could do is this is the um, automatic color reduction and when you turn that on you have the ability to I guess move your slider up and down and every time I move it down it takes more color out of the design um, but if I put it all the way back up to 10 it will um, put those all the colors back in the design that were taken out um, but the other option would be when you use these little eye doppers, if I say add color, then basically as you mouse around your design, it shows you the color that's underneath the little eye dopper and you can add, click on it to add that color into your design. And this becomes really important when you're dealing with um, JPEG images that maybe you've downloaded from the internet or you scanned and there's sometimes dozens or even hundreds of colors available and so it becomes very important to reduce those colors. So you have an automatic re color reduction um, or you have the ability to insert colors from your design so if there's a specific shade of red that you want to make sure it gets included you can add it with these little eye daubers. And this one here you actually get the ability to click and drag to get um, like a little circle and the larger you make your circle the more colors that get included in it and so you can decide you know what to add to your design by doing it that way anyway um, this will actually pop your image up and give you the ability to edit your image in Corel draw if you needed to do that but usually speaking when you open up this click to design it's a simple matter of just deciding if you're happy with the colors that have been selected or you work on you know reducing those colors now, you can reduce the colors visually. So for example, I can see that there's pink and there's sort of like a light pink and a dark pink. And maybe I decide that I want to reduce those colors and I think we'll just go with one pink. So in that case, I could take the kind of darker pink, left click and drag and move it up over top of the other pink. And when I let go, it combines those two colors. And now you can see here that there's light pink and dark pink and they're just shown as a dark pink. And in the preview window, you can see those two flowers being the same pink. And if you want, if you need to get closer, you have like the ability to zoom in and zoom out in this little preview window to help yourself with this um, color reduction step. 
So now looking down a little further, when you um, are viewing the colors that are going to be in this design, you might notice also that there's these little check boxes and they are omit, fills, and details. Now omit basically means don't stitch it, don't include it in the stitching. So in this case, the software default chose white would get omitted. Um, and then the rest of the colors have been set as fill colors. And you can see here that they're all set as fills and quite often the software will decide that black should be a detail color. In fact, I think it was a detail color until I clicked on black to have it added and it added it in as a fill. In other words, if I just hit cancel right now and do nothing and start the tool all over again, click the design advanced, you'll see here that this is how it came up originally. So they, the software had the blue and the purple or the dark blue and the light blue combined and the software had the black as a detail color. Everything else filled and white was omitted. Now I could even reduce it further. Why don't we make the pinks the same color? So I'll go ahead and, so we've got it. Down to eight colors. Two blues are being combined. Two pinks are being combined. These are the fill colors. And when it's a detail color, it generally means it's going to sew last. Now I'll come back to these other additional options in a moment. We'll take a look at that. But right now I'm just going to say okay. And it goes ahead and converts all of the embroidery based upon the artwork and the colors. And now you can see that it's completed um, creating the embroidery and it would be ready to stitch it out if you like. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to select that Tiffany again. I want to show um, specifically the difference in the color, the fills versus outlines. And so we're just going to bring the new Tiffany artwork over and I think I'll just hide my hoop so that I can get a little bit closer to these two artworks. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and run that click to design uh, advanced tool again. And again, it's reducing the blues. That's fine. We'll even let it go ahead and reduce the pink so that they're the same. The only change I'm going to make this time is instead of having black as the fill color, you see, because if I just move this over, I didn't really like three-dimensionally I didn't like sewing black last because I felt like, see now the sewing order of this design is such that these flowers have to sew first and then the black comes last and dimensionally I feel like the flowers should sew after the hair so that it has a more three-dimensional appearance. And so to accomplish that, I'm going to have the black set as a fill color just by changing the check mark or check box. And then I'm going to have these other colors. So I guess, first of all, this color here is the face. So I'm going to leave that as a fill. But this next color, this pink, I'm going to move that into the details, which means it will get sewn later. And this sandy brown will do the same. And the blue color will sew as a detail. And these purple colors as well. So basically, the only things that I have now as fills is the color for the face and the color for the black. And then the other colors are being set to be details, which means they'll sew after. Now I'm going to say OK. So there you can see the difference in the design. Um, because I set the weave fill to sew first, it sews as a nice smooth fill. And then these flowers just simply are placed or stitched over top of that weave fill. So that's um, your ability in the automatic digitizing. We have the ability to adjust the sewing order and the number of colors in the design. Now, uh, I'm going to continue looking at this. And so I think what I'll do is just start a new design, a new window. Choose image, insert image. And I'm going to get the pencil, images of the pencils. And I'm going to run that same image preparation. Um, click the design tool again. Now, getting back to colors. So the original has six colors. We could do the automatic color sort to reduce them. And if I did, so now it's five. And it looks like it made the tips of the pencils all be red. And if I go down again, now it's made the white and the inside of one of these pencils the same color and I'm just not really happy with the way this is going it's not what I'm after so I'm just gonna say cancel and what I was really sort of trying to get to is if I wanted to reduce the colors maybe I would like to set it so that well, okay first of all white we're gonna let it omit white 
and black we'll leave that as a detail color but maybe I'd like to have these pencils the yellow and the green and the blue maybe I just want to have them be all one color so I could click and drag red and let go of it over blue and then click drag click on top of green and drag and let go of it over top of that color too so you can see now that I have a new color gray and it was made up of the blue red and green colors so if I said OK, and you can see that up here, that my pencils are all been made to be the same color is basically what I was trying to get at. So if I say OK, I end up with a three color design, and I was able to take more sort of ownership over what colors they were. Now, if you didn't want the pencils to be green, that's no big deal. Select the color gray, come over here and say, well, I really wanted red pencils. So that's easy to do. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say undo. And this time I will do the click the design advance to gain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it, I'll allow it to run the full number of colors, that doesn't matter. But I wanted to talk about the options at the bottom. So we have outlines, borders, and details. Now, right now, the details, that, that would end up being this black, is set as satin. And your choice is either satin or satin lines. And satin lines can be good when it's all meant to be um, a very uniform width to the line. And satin's better when it sort of goes from thick to thin in all different sort of shapes. But in this case, I think a satin line would be appropriate for the outline. And so you would click on that. And it would just give you nice, consistent outlines for all of your black objects is basically what it does. Now, I'm going to use undo again and show if I... Um, choose to have an outline added. So why don't we have this um, add a red outline. And I think what I'll do, because there's red in the design, I'm just going to combine those colors again. So we have the three color pencils, but we're adding a red outline. And I'll say OK. And so you can see what it did is it added a red run stitch around all of the parts of the design and I guess if you wanted to have like a red work design you could actually select those first three colors and delete them and just leave the red run stitch outlines and so now if I maybe just hide the image for a minute you can see that I have created basically like a one color outline of of that artwork kind of like a red work design now one more thing maybe what I can do is just I'll just take this artwork and bring it off to the side. We'll do it one more time and this time I'll run the same process but instead of adding an outline I'll have it add a border. So we'll just choose to add a border and say OK. So you can see what it does is it adds a satin border and the satin border gets stitched exactly around the edge of the image and in this case that's not entirely appropriate because the pencils get a little bit overlapped. Now that would certainly be easy to modify or fix, I could just select that border object and click on the handles and move them so that they don't basically reshaping that border so that it doesn't quite get overlapped by those pencils. So, so that's the click to design option and it's the most automated of the automatic digitizing options. And there are other automatic digitizing options. And so next, we'll take a look at the click to stitch tool, which has a little bit more control. And then after we're done with the click to stitch tool, we'll take a look at the Corel Draw interface and how we can use the Corel sort of graphic modes to convert artwork into embroidery.